Hello there once again. Welcome back to Let's Play Motorsport Manager. The Timix here, and we're going to tackle now the final and long um, rookie challenge. But before I do that, a few housekeeping things. Probably noticing that I've turned the music off. That's for copyright reasons. Should have done that a while ago. Um, it does obviously add to it, but it's only really present during the menus, which isn't going to be... A huge amount obviously the time spent in the race it doesn't affect anything I've turned the car engines down a little bit felt they were still a little bit too loud and also I did some off-screen uh, investigating for this challenge because there's some new things and since it's such a long challenge I didn't want to get into it and then you know, have to restart it or do it over because of something stupid that I didn't know how it worked. Um, that would just be a whole bunch of extra extra videos that would obviously not add to the quality of this. So, um, did that. And I'm also going to make a change in what I'm putting in the videos. Instead of going with two videos per race, you know, the practice and prep, and then the qualifying and race in a second video, I'm going to put it all into one. The videos are going to be longer. This first one's probably going to be particularly long. Um, but we'll get things moving along. Um, because even doing like two races or a single race per video, so two races a week, we're still, I mean, that's six weeks for just this challenge. That's, that's a lot. So, okay, so yes, Daddy's Boy. And it's crisis mode at Hammer AMR. Chairman Bobby Stone has placed his son Bobby Jr. in the number one seat. You've got the unenviable job of winning this season while keeping the Stone family happy. And we need to win the team's championship. If we do, Bobby Jr. will be available a new career. Cannot leave the team, and Bobby Stone Jr. can't leave the team either. And, yeah, 12 races. So let's get this show on the road. Okay, yeah, and same thing. It's got some important rules down here. We'll get to that. All right, so here's our team. And I just want to take a look at how we're doing overall. The car, our first. Um, drivers are only sixth, thanks to our uh, Bobby jo Stone Jr., our, our uh, friendly personal example of nepotism. We've got the number two HQ behind Spartan. Uh, third best staff. So that's not bad. Uh, sponsors are not good. Seventh, so we'll need to work on that. And a pretty good pit crew. So let's take a look at our mail situation. Um, and then we've got, this is from the uh, from Bobby Stone, the chairman. As you're well aware, my son Bobby Stone Jr. will be joining us for his joining us this year for his first season in GT racing, I would advise that you keep Bobby Jr. happy and racing. Yeah, not advice. It's a demand. Between you and me, it can't hurt your prospects if Bobby Jr. has nothing but nice things to say about you. I also expect us to win the championship this season. It would be detrimental to my son's career if he was forever associated with Hammer's first championship loss in a decade. I'm sure you'll figure it out. So, first championship loss in a decade, that tells you this is a pretty dominant team. Other than having to put up with uh, Junior here, you know, we have, we're in a strong situation. We'll get to that more in a bit. So, uh, just a heads up, your badge might say team principal. Make no mistake who's in charge here. Mess with me and I go straight to dad. Keep me racing and winning, and we can all pretend we're a happy family. Capiche? Yeah. So the weight stripping we've already seen, we can skip over that, but let's take a look at this. Three-stage qualifying. Um, as the name suggests, there's three stages qualifying, Q1, 2, and 3. 
top 15 drivers from Q1 go through to Q2, and the top 10 drivers from Q2 will go through to Q3. Um, furthermore, the top 10 drivers will need to start the race on the tires they finish qualifying with, which should help to keep things interesting. That does affect your tire management. Uh, the f Given the, the, the uh, three-stage qualifying will be significant to a lot of teams, but not ours, because we can easily get through the first two without breaking a sweat. So for the first race, I am going to show all three, but after that, it's just going to be redundant, and you'll see why when we get there. And then there's also the ERS, uh, Introduction to Energy Recovery Systems. Uh, allows your cars to harvest energy as they race, which is then stored in a battery. As the manager, you can then decide when to utilize this energy two ways. Power mode. Activating this mode is like lighting the blue touch paper, giving your car a huge speed burst, drains the battery very quickly. Hybrid mode. Massively cuts your fuel consumption, allowing your driver to make their fuel last much longer. This drains the battery slowly. And finally, remember the ERS is only active during a race. Good luck. You know, it's not used in practice or qualifying. This is going to be significant also. It's going to factor into the race strategy, which is going to be much more complicated this time around for multiple reasons. Okay, so... I want to take a look at some of the other uh, teams here. We've got Dogtooth Lake, um, who, you know, is really not much of a factor. As you can see, they've got a good pit crew, but other than that, I mean, their car, their car sucks. So then you've got us, Lockhart Motorsport, pretty good drivers. Um, the drivers are a little better than ours, but it doesn't look like they've, you know, the car's seventh. It doesn't look like their car is strong enough to compete. Oberhof, pretty good drivers, but they've literally got nothing else. Orange GT. Now, they're, they've got, they've got sponsors, they got staff, they got HQ. They've got a pretty good car, and um, their drivers suck. <laughs> they're they're only a little below average, but their drivers are ninth overall. Um, so it looks like it's top heavy driver group with Vittorio Vittorio Corsa down there at the bottom. So, um, you know, fourth best car. It looks like if their car and their drivers were a little bit better, Orange would be a big threat. Atsuno sponsors will probably change. Staff is decent. Uh, pretty good headquarters, and then they've got number two in drivers, number three in in the car. So they're they're going to be a player. Atsuno is a player, potentially a challenger to us. Not not somebody to overlook. We we'll want to pay attention to them. Uh, their drivers. They've got Hashimoto here, an 18 year old, who is quite uh, quite good, as you can see, just over four stars. And they've got Tanaka and Mulin also. Spartan MRT. And I think these guys are the main challenges to us. Maxime Laurie, 32, um, in his prime. And a strong driver. We don't know as much about Sofia Sevilla. But they have the number two car right behind us. And they've got the best drivers. And then also their HQ is actually better than ours. You can see their chassis is pretty solid, like three to four, three to three and a half stars, all the way across the board. So this is this, this is a strong team. It it basically, I would say the championships most likely to come down to Hammer versus Spartan. Atsuno may be playing spoiler, but that's how it looks from here. And then we've got Torin, uh, strong staff, but you know they don't have they don't have the car, they don't have the drivers. Uh, Vittorio Corsa, and then there's just they're 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 terrible, they're absolutely terrible. And then 
We've got Wolf Hagen. They're not bad. Um, you know, number three drivers, number five car. They, you know, the HQ isn't there for them. They're they're probably going to be an above average team. Uh, but you see, none of their drivers are in their prime. That doesn't help me. Their bags is old. The other two really young. And then these are the Challenger series, which is below us. We don't need to concern ourselves with that. Okay. So that's what we've got. Um, let's take a look at some of our people. Um, so here's where our drivers. We've got Andrea Gabler, who, from the look at the other drivers, she's one of the better drivers. She should be able to compete with the best drivers in this particular championship. And then we've got a good reserve driver. Um, let's just take a look at Gabler a little more closely and we can see that uh, yeah she's old so she's like over the hill she was better and that kind of sucks. Uh, she's good in wet weather mentor helping others to improve faster and as an endurance champion she's more consistent than most has some marketability so she still has good skills but she's not a great driver anymore and then we've got Bobby Stone Jr. and look at this feedback is hideous so that means he's gonna suck in the practice round um, pretty much solid for the other places. Strong overtaking, strong fitness. So he's greedy, wants all of the new parts that we design. He's a schmoozer. Provides plus one voting power at the start of each season. Voting power is not a thing we've gotten into yet because it's pretty much just a career, a career issue. And chairman's pet. Hurts his market or relationship with others in the team. But uh, marketability is uh, is a thing there. And then Chica Balazar, young driver, um, improving, and frankly better than Bobby Stone Jr. So that gives you the immediate temptation. Well, what if I put Balazar in the car and make uh, you know Stone just sit on the sideline? And if you do that to Junior, I think I would get into trouble. So I'm going to pass on that just because it doesn't seem like it's what, uh, what we're looking for here. See, it's Wonder Kid. Uh, it's got lots of potential for Balcazar. Unfortunate. Um, easy on the fuel. Focus is not great, but overtaking is good there. So the hothead is a plus and minus. Um, ability. Okay, our staff, Claire White, um, not great at the gearbox, decent at the suspension, and, you know, really good at the other parts. Kenny Harding, our race mechanic for Bobby Stone, and I looked through this saying, you know, do I want to switch up mechanics? Well, these guys are solid. Harding and Dunbar are solid. They're not great, but they're solid. But look at their relationships. They've got some perks here. Um, we don't have time in a single season to rebuild this with new mechanics. So it's it's probably not worth doing that. Um, Harding doesn't fix parts very well, so we'll want to be aware of that with Gabler's car. Concentration is good. Pit stops are good. Performance is good. Reliability, not great. So, he'll definitely be better at the performance side. And then you've got Roger Dunbar, who thankfully is good at reliability, not so hot as the performance side. So, that'll that'll balance out, and we'll still have a good mechanic in each of those spots in the HQ, which is really going to help. And then he's much better at fixing. But his, you know, concentration pit stops, not as high. So, these are not, again, they're not great, but they're solid. We don't need to deal with scouting for our purposes. Um, for finances, um, I'll explain why in a minute, but I definitely want to move the budget down to the minimum. And again, this is because we don't care about next year's car. We care about this year. This year is all that matters. 
Let's take a look at our standings real quick. And you can see we're at the beginning of the season. There's nothing that we've done so far. Um, look at our rules. So, medium length practice sessions. I'm just going to go through what some of the impacts are going to be. Uh, they're 15 minutes. And it was 20 last time. So we're not going to be able to totally maximize everything here. We're going to have to pick and choose a little more. A little more strategy involved in that. Qualifying our 10. I believe they were 12 before. A standard, standard race length. So they're, they're not going to be as long in general. Yes. Um, pit stops are fast. And pit stops are done uh, se sequentially. And then we've got uh, points for the top six. Now that's important because it's only the top teams, which of course include us, that are going to get uh, get the scoring. We do have double points for the final race. And then we've got also bonus points for the fastest lap. Bonus points for pole position. So the... Um, the qualifying, the last round of qualifying there, is going to be really important. And get the extra little boost. Uh, and then normal width slicks. They're expensive, but pretty high performance. Tire compounds are pre-distributed. So we all will start with the same tires. I don't get to choose what tires I take, which I, I was able to last time. Um, things are also more simple with two dry weather compounds. We had three last time. So the tires are going to be sort of more locked in. I'm not going to have as many choices there. Twelve uh, per weekend. There was 15 last time. Again, it, it's going to uh, limit, I, limit the options. Virtual safety car... There is refueling. So there wasn't refueling last time, so I'm going to need to manage uh, fuel at the pit stops, which is going to be another complication. Driver aids are allowed, so the driver's skill is not going to be as important, relatively speaking, because of the tech. The three uh, session qualifying we've already discussed, ERS we've already discussed, hybrid power mode, standing start, yeah, and we do have weight stripping. Okay, so that's that's our deal here. Now, take a look over at the HQ, because this is the first uh, challenge that I've done that the HQ is actually really going to matter here. We In the past, we haven't had enough time to really upgrade this and have it make a difference. And this time, it's going to make a difference, uh, a significant one. And I've thought about different things to upgrade. Let me just take a look through here. Like, let's say we wanted to upgrade, um, you know, to the design center. You know, that, that's a big expense. Let's say we wanted to go all out and do that. Well, that takes 30 weeks. Seven, seven months, say, give or take. If we go over to the calendar, it's right now the middle of March. So you basically be talking the rest of the year. It wouldn't be up before the rest of the year. Well, we're, so in order for anything to be useful for us, it could probably only take a few months. So even if we want to upgrade the brakes, uh, research and development, you know, we've got level one of three of that. That's a lower... You know, that could work. That's a 15-week job. What about the test track? Well, that's 26 weeks. So some of these can work, and some of them can't. You can see that we've got a high development level for the engine, a medium one for the brakes, and, uh, you know, a little bit below average for these three. And also, I'm going to switch over to the car here for a minute. You notice that there's... <laughs> a little bit difference in the parts. 
which is one of the interesting things is we're now in the GT series, we're not in the single seater open wheel racing. So there are only five parts. Where there was a rear wing and a front wing for the cornering ability last time, we still got the suspension for cornering for medium speed, and we got the high speed. It has the spoiler. There is no low speed in this. There's no low speed part. So it's not a stock part, just there isn't one. Now you can see our chassis is not quite as good as Spartans, which is unfortunate. You know, the improvability is a little bit low. The rest is close to theirs, not quite there. Um, overall, we're still the best. We are the best in top speed in acceleration and in deceleration. Just a bit behind Atsuno, but also ahead of Spartan in the uh, medium speed corners. And there, so we're actually ahead of Spartan in all aspects of the actual car parts, but they've got a better chassis and they've got better drivers. But still, I mean, it looks pretty good for us. It looks like we've got a strong chance here as long as we don't royally screw things up. Now, if we look at our parts, um, I'm going to go into the improvement and take a look at what we're going to do with our staff. Now, we none of these are spec parts, so we can improve all of them. And we've got Harding over here in the performance side and Dunbar in the reliability. That's how we want it. So what do we want to spend the effort on? Well, none of these are going to be, like, optimally I want to improve all of them. I want to get new parts for all of them. So just sort of help us not getting off to a bad start would be to boost the reliability. And I'm just going to take the lowest ranking uh, parts here. I'm going to throw all them in. And also do the same thing on the performance side. So you know, the car is a little bit less complicated. Five different parts for each. And I would like to try to max those out. That would seem to be the most sensible thing to do. Okay, so then going back to the HQ, what do we want to do? And there's a sixth. Yeah, we've got the upgrade and the new ones. And right now we've got five and a half million. So what can we do right away? Well, none of the upgrade ones, you know, are going to fit within that little scouting facility, but that's not going to help us. We're not getting anybody new. So we could build the handling development center, improve our suspension to great. Um, the staff center improves, uh, improves the skills. And again, that's more of a long-term thing than a one-season thing. The wind tunnel is too expensive. The telemetry center would improve the gearbox from good to great. And the simulator would improve the spoiler from good to great. Now, the cheapest building to build is also going to help us with the part that we have that's the worst. And that's what I like to call symmetry. I think that makes this a really strong thing that we want to do. So I'm just going to build that. It's going to cost us another 54k per race to sustain it. 16 weeks. Now if I just look at some of these other ones, the Handling Development Center also 16 weeks, the Telemetry Center 20 weeks. That would take a little bit longer. So we're going to build this, and that means in a few months, partway through the year, we're going to be able to develop better spoilers. Okay, now, and it's going to show us down here, the simulator under construction. Now, it, this also means that we're down to one million. And that could be a problem, particularly since... We want to improve the parts. Now, what parts do we want to improve? Well, I obviously don't want to do the spoiler. Because I want to pick something that, you know, 
I'm going to be able to max out, and we can do the spoiler later in the year. So, theoretically, I mean, I think right now we're going to want to be building finances over time. And I like the idea of getting stuff out quickly. So what's inexpensive and can get done in a short amount of time? And I think the answer to that, of course, is the brakes, which are also important for every, every track. Let me go back. But our, our base time is 5.7 days. You can see um, that these, um, basically, spoiler and brakes are the faster ones. And the spoiler we're going to be holding off till later. So that is a good thing to search for. And the brakes can go up to great parts, so we'll have several rounds. But uh, that's what I'm that's what I'm going to aim at. And then we can see you know again at first the strategy is to boost is to get up through the ranks here average good great etc as fast as possible and we've got the minus one day ability here if you look down here she's got a minus two day for 500k so i'll want to be taking advantage of that every chance i get but right now um by clicking this i'm going to save a day of course, the more days I can save, the faster we get these parts out. faster we get them in the cars, the more improvement we're going to see. So that's uh, yeah, 4.7 days for a quarter million. And I'm just going to go ahead and bite the bullet on that. And I could go with more sponsors, but I don't want to sign the sponsor deals until I need the money. Or until the next race starts. Then we can go into fit parts, but I don't really need to do that yet. Again, why mess with that until we get to the next, uh, next, um, the, the race itself, you know. So that's pretty much our setup. Um, you can see our next race, acceleration, deceleration, top speed are going to be crucial. 37 laps. Uh, this is Cape Town. And it looks like it's going to rain in qualifying, be better rest, record, eh, better weather for the practice and the race. So let's get proceeding here. Yes, and you have to confirm that you have read all of these critical must-respond emails from GMA President Ernie Heckelrock. Already done. Okay, let's see what we have. So, Assistant Adam Marshall's prepared a race on Cape Town. 10% chance of rain. Lap record being a minute 12. Um, favors excellent acceleration. We've got the best gearbox, so we're, we're happy with that. Ultra and Super Softs. It's a fairly good track for tire wear. So, basically, we're looking at... Uh, Lots of speeding up and slowing down. They want us to uh, to upgrade the design center. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> we finished building the new brakes, and that's what we want to look at next. Design the next brake part. And again, I want I want speed because I just I want to get the best parts out there sooner to get give us a competitive edge. It's going to cost exactly everything we have left, 750k. And I'm banking on getting, yeah, the balance is zero, but I'm banking on getting more money from the sponsors whenever I am in the need of that. And of course, I don't really have any reason to work on this part because... Yeah, it would be a little better than the others if I boosted the reliability, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to get, I want to get these other brakes out beforehand. And then it's worth taking a look and maybe adjusting some of these. Let's knock out the 78% ones. 
throw in the 75. You know, I'm just trying to equalize it, make sure I'm always throwing the ones with the lowest reliability in. Okay, we've got a decision to make. Parte, says Bobby Jones Jr. Chip, our first race is coming up, and I want to kick the season off with a bang. I'm thinking we take the whole team out for a mega 24-hour party marathon. The clubs in Cape Town are supposed to be legendary. What do you say? We can build it as a team-building exercise. All aboard the party train for a million. Boost his morale by 15. And adds the personality trade party animal. Now, I did test this out and see what that is. And that'll lower his fitness and focus by two each. So it'll make him drive worse. And yeah, I'm sorry that's not worth it. Do I look like your dad? Now this is a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit touchy of a thing to say. But I'm just going to have to, I'm going to try to work on like doing what he wants. Keeping him in the, in the car, giving him the best parts. Um, really working on, <coughs> you know, making him happy from a racing point of view. But stuff like this that's just going to hurt us on the track, I mean, I, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to roll over and just say, hey, whatever you want, buddy, like, you run the team. No, because he's not going to get blamed if we don't win the championship. I am. Okay, so let's take another look at our reliability issues. I think I'm still where I want to be with these. Yep. Moving on. And we've got... Um, okay, I don't care about people nearing the end of his career. We've got speculation about the Cape Town opener. We're the team to beat. And um, new boss Chip Winters, that would be me. Be out to impress the rest of the paddock. I'm extremely concerned about the status of the team's finances. There's a long way to go this season. The coffers aren't looking healthy or out of money. You need to make the money last. I hope this won't impact your performance in the final few races. And I really don't think it will. I just haven't signed any sponsor deals yet because I haven't had to. Moving on. Okay, and now we've finished the new break. So now we're going to need some money for the breaks. And we could just deficit spend, but let's... And in fact, I think I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to worry about going into the negative. Because I want to maximize our income. And you can see, this has actually moved up slightly. With just the small bit of performance increase we've done. That's interesting. Okay, design new parts. Keep going with the breaks. I want to keep going here, keep going here. And it really doesn't matter which one of these we pick, so I'll just, you know. Um, that's the third one. So that means that I believe it's going to be the next one we design. That's going to be the last one. Like, that's going to be the peak part one. And then we'll... Then we'll want to get off of this build time thing and just work on like what's the best we can make this part. Um, but yeah, it's going to cost us a million. And it'll be done three days after the race. So we could potentially have a break by, say, the second or third race that we're using for a new one. So a million in the hole at the moment. But that will not last. Okay, still where I want to be on all of that fun stuff. Okay, now we're ready to travel to Cape Town. Another two days, 14 hours, and now we want to hit our sponsors because it's our last chance. And we've waited. We got a couple more. We had originally five offers. Now I've got eight, so I've allowed myself the maximum offers. Okay, so $3,000, 
three races or nine races here. And I'm mostly looking at the upfront here. The, the qualif we're only going to get, we only can choose one of the bonus ones. And this is a little bit better on a per race amount. This would give us more now, which it's tempting, but given the distance difference in the length, I'm just going to take the 450. So, okay, we're half a million in the hole now. That's better. And there's only one offer. If we get first, we can get 1.7 million a race. Well, that's that's a heck of a thing. And then, how about this? Since we've got that uh, premier first place one, um, question is, do we really want to aim for that? But we could have third or above for a 1 million. And that's a 3 million upfront payment. Yeah, I don't see any reason not to say yes to this. This is a 1 million for five races. Slightly higher bonus. But uh, I really like having that much money right now. So I'm going to take that. And there. Now, Chairman, you can go away because I'm back in the black there. And one more. 12 races for 4 million, 14 races, 500 now, but 500 each race. This is going to be much better over time. Because we'll get 7 million. Oh, yes, we'll get 7 million overall. 7.5 million over 14 is a lot better than 4 million over 12. So we'll take that. And there we have almost 3 million, and you see our marketability is ridiculously high. The team is great. Um, sponsor appeal level is up there. We've got the helipad. I mean, we're, we, we can just pull in the money with sponsors, and we're going to need it, but uh, right now that's going really well for us. So, I think it's time to head off to Cape Town. Okay, so which of these are we going to go for? And we've got a strong team. I'm not sure it's strong enough to get first. And we aren't that hard up for money. So if we go for the third place one, then we should be fine. And we can see our financials. We're looking to lose. Boy, did I, did I change the... Yeah, I did. So it still looks like we're going to lose money uh, per race, and that's that's not fantastic. That is not fantastic at all. Um, okay, yeah, we're going to, including bonuses, 232, and then we could potentially gain money if we did that. So... We're at a point where we can't go up much higher in expenses because of, you know, the financial situation here. We're going to lose money. And that also could make things really interesting for part development later on. We'll have to see how far they want to let us go in debt. I'm going to see how this goes for a race or two. I may stop going with the, you know, 500K two-day um thing on the part development that might be a mistake okay so want to fit our parts and we gotta we gotta satisfy stone so we're gonna give him all the best stuff And the other thing that does is it equalizes our drivers, which could be a good or bad thing in the uh, in sort of the the points comparison. But um, yeah, they both think they have the best car. Well, they're not both right, but <laughs> I'll take that uh, that that bit of fortune. But if you have the the weaker driver. you know, with the better parts, then they could both end up being fairly similar. Yeah, 
and estimated to finish third and estimated to finish second. You know, if we finish second and third, I mean, that's going to keep us right up near the top. Obviously, we'd be, we want to win, but uh, I can't really argue with it. So, yeah, let's take that. Headed to Cape Town in South Africa, round one of the GT International. And it's raining for practice. That was not expected. But it's what we've got to deal with. So, okay, for practice, Stone shouldn't mind too much. And we're going to sit him down, because we really need to get set up for the race, and Balcazar is best at that. So I think we really want to just go for level 1 qualifying, and then hit the race trim hard in the future. Unless we're going to just get it there. Oh, we did. Okay, boy, just at the very end. But still, it's what I want to do. I just think the race is going to be more important to us than the qualifying. And if we can't get both. So, quarter of a second back for Balcazar. Half a second back for Gabor, my best driver. Uh, not super happy about that. Let's see how things go for... Yes, lame qualifying session. Uh-huh. Or lame practice session. Whatever. Qualifying. Here we go. And we've only got to make it in the top 15. Which, frankly, should be a piece of cake. So we're just going to hit that qualifying trim. And this is an interesting ability. Sweetest spots. The green sweet spots much bigger. Better chance to optimize brake and tire temperatures. And then we're going to go with... You know what? Is it going to rain? Yeah, it's going to rain. So let's just go with the inters for you along with the qualifying. Okay, so we've got uh, Trenoweth from Dogtooth is out. Edwards from Pretoria or Corsa. Oberhoff, Atsuno, Torin all missing a driver. So we are... Five different teams are only going to have one driver in that top 15. Of course, they'll still be in the race. They'll just be near the back of the field to start. Okay, so let's see about session two. And this one is a little bit more iffy. Stone ended up 11th in the first qualifying. Not impressed by that. Um, but... We need a little bit better performance from him because we want to get both drivers in the top 10. So, and it's going to rain here. So we're going to want to have enters. I'm going to send Stone out first. Spartan MRT has 12th and 14th for Sevilla. So none of their drivers in the top 10. I'm perfectly happy with that. Uh, meanwhile, we get 4th and 5th, and we would really like to get 1 in the top 3 to get the sponsor bonus. Uh, we're a lot more concerned about what our qualifying is going to do in this next part. So yeah, missing the sponsor bonus. We'll definitely want to be less aggressive, the top sponsor bonus. like It looks like we have a decent shot at being in the 5 to 6 area. But not, uh, not much higher. And that also means that it looks like right now, I mean, just looking at the situation, we've got you know, a four-star driver and a three-whatever-star driver in stone. Looking like our, our car advantage is being more than neutralized by other better drivers. That's the only real good reason I can think of why we wouldn't be uh, doing better than this in qualifying. We'll have to get through a couple races to be sure of that. But it looks like we're really going to need to improve the cars in order to you know, narrow that gap and be winners. Also we need to be on point with race strategy. 
So, only worth watching because of Neil Horgerson. Yeah. Okay, so... Again, we're locked into those tires um, due to the uh, requirements of um, the qualifying system. Race trim. And let me take a look at the weather here. There's really no... There wasn't any indication of rain in the long-term forecast. There's no indication of rain over the first half of the track here. So I don't think... I think we're going to be better off going with super softs. Probably not going to get rain. And then for Stone, it's different because he's got the engine expert. Uh, higher engine modes don't impact conditions. So he can run flat out the whole race, which is going to require a totally different strategy. But he'll take that and his race trim. And the tires, again, we can't change them, but the fuel, we can. And this is a thing where, you know, how much fuel do you want? I'm going to go with two-thirds. And we didn't have fuel options. Because you just started, you had X amount of fuel and you had to make it last in the uh, previous, you know, the World Motorsport uh, when we did the Up in Flames Challenge. And this is different. Um, we've got uh, the... the the reason to reduce fuel, of course, is to make the car lighter and make it uh, go faster. You can see 0 0.064 seconds per lap, so by reducing those seven, we're going to get almost half a second of speed, um, roughly, per lap. The other thing is, of course, also we have to pit sooner. And we'd like to be able to do a two-pit stop. So I'm, I'm going to go with about 16. Um, I'll make it more aggressive, reducing that later. Gabler not looking like she's doing that well. Um, looking like a bad race for her, unfortunately. And then let's take a look at Stone. And for him, I'm going to go differently because I want to use all the fuel. I'm planning on having him burn a ton of it um, by running the engine flat out to take advantage of that... Um, the uh, the mechanic uh, relationship ability he's got with higher engine modes not affecting his condition. I'm also going to tick his stuff down just a little bit. Um, I'm going to lose 10% on the parts that are not crucial. So like the brakes, this are going to stay, but I'm going to lose these so in like normally I would go with a 60% gap 70% for the uh, and by say gap I of course mean gap between like the red zone and your starting reliability um, here 70% um, for crucial 60% for the others so now here I want to keep the crucial ones at the 60 which is what we've got but I'm gonna go down to 50% um, so the 70% to the 20 here and, uh, you know, just try to get that little bit of extra performance out of the car. And again, I'm just experimenting with this stuff. Of course, I want them both to go nutso at the beginning. And so we got Hashimoto and Holgerson in front. Hashimoto by far the best time. And then Kaluza not far behind... Uh, Holgerson, almost another half a second back to Gabler. And then a bit of a gap, Wood and Parisi. And then Stone is back here along Bags. About half a second slower than Gabler. So, it's looking like we're really not in the league of the top three, but we're going to hope something breaks and we can get into that group. And then this is our ERS. It looks like we got a decent start here for both drivers. Not great, not terrible. But the ERS is charging here. And I can switch it over to hybrid. At the beginning, you can't switch it over to power. It takes power a little bit to ramp up. So it doesn't let you do that right at the beginning of the race. But I think hybrid going for the long-term benefit is better. Um, reducing the fuel. And 
the best way to use that, in my opinion, is to get the car close to being low on fuel and then use it. Because if you conserve fuel now, well, you're running longer at uh, more fuel in the tank, which means you're slower. Versus, like, if you conserve fuel at the end of the tank, you're going to do better because the car is going to be faster then. The only catch with that is you really got to time it well because you can run out of fuel. So stone now up to fifth. So fourth and fifth. And yeah, tires are taking a beating. We're going to move the tires back down to neutral. Stone now up in front of Gabler. So Stone having a very nice, uh, a nice showing here. We're up in 4th and 5th. And now I'm going to back Gabler off to... Um, well, medium. She can try to push it later. I just... I want to get a handle and make sure I'm comfortable with the reliability here in this first race. I'm going to go around once more with Stone, then he's going to come in, I'll wait another lap, and then pit Gabler. I don't necessarily feel the need to run the Ultras down all the way because of how much they lose performance. And we're definitely going to switch to Super Softs. Um, and I want to go all the way up on the fuel and then see how that works and how much I think I can cheat it and only fill up less for that final spot. Go to go for a strong finish. The park condition here uh, still looking pretty strong. We can charge the battery. Um, surging it causes it to overcharge, disabling it for the rest of the race. I'm not going to do that. Battery is still fairly full right now. Let's see how Gabler does these next couple laps. Right behind Sevilla. And then moving ahead of Sevilla very nicely. Gabler will now be coming in. Also, we'll be filling up all the way. And I want to take a look at the parts here. Yeah, 65 is the lowest, so the brakes are taking a bit of a beating. But we are almost a third of the way through the race. And that's still pretty solid. You can see here the refueling is really takes time on these stops. You spend a lot more time in the pits under this kind of operation. And he's back to charging. So Gabler is going to come in from third position. And if she could finish third the way things have gone so far, I would take that very much. And we're hoping I don't have to refuel as much later. Just hoping to run solid here as Gabler, only in 13th. Um, Perfectly willing to push her into um, higher engine mode to get through traffic. But that's about the only thing I want to do it for. 
There comes Stone. And Stone now up to ninth, but is going to need to come in for that last stop. This is 37. So I really think it's, again, he's basically looking at a full, a full set of fuel. Except he's going to do fuel conservation more. So I don't want it to be full. How much can I afford to not to not use though? How much extra am I going to get? And I'm going to guess it's going to be right there. I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to guess that. His parts doing fine. He's going to make it the rest of the way. No need to recharge. Meanwhile, Gabler, and yeah, go ahead and charge again. I actually, the more I think about it, I don't mind having you full coming out. I'd rather use up this fuel. The question for, for Gabler really is can she hold off those other cars? Stone, uh, my, my bags, dot Sevilla is who I'm talking about, to uh, to get that third spot. It's looking like Lori's winning. It's looking like Gate Holgerson is second. Yep, breaks down to thirty. Definitely going to want to come in now. I'm going to switch to ultras. Now, how much fuel? 16 laps. I really think I only need half of it. I might not even need that much. With all the hybrid power I'm going to be able to use. I want to make sure I have enough. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um... I'm going to try to make it through on the brakes. See, I've used up about 50%. I mean, the brakes are really going to be touch and go whether they're going to make it. Screw up on the rear jack, costing about two seconds. Although it probably didn't, given the fact that they were refueling during that time. Let's go hybrid. Just to drop down that energy a little bit. Yep, less than two seconds. One and a half. Got three laps to go and not that much fuel. Stone up to tenth. Oh goodness, he's almost out of fuel. He's going to run out of fuel. Ugly. I'm going to go down to low and conserve and see if that can get him home. Gabler. Better go hybrid. You're almost down to a lap. You're close enough. Push your tires. That should get some more speed. It's Laurie and Holgerson, ladies and gentlemen, or Holgerson and Gabler, rather, for that second place position. Just over a second behind. It's 
Let's see, where do I want to go? I think this next set of turns. Going for it now. Oh, it's so close. I made it! Past Holgerson! Come on, stay in front for the finish. And there it is, second place. Oh, I'll take it. And let's move you back up to medium. Looks like I'm going to make it around with stone, which was the goal. But only in 11th position. Yeah, he's not happy with that, but uh, Gabler got second. Some pretty decent strategy there for her. Um, Lori first, Sevilla fourth. So Spartan definitely um, looking like our top foe. But hopefully getting that second place position will get us some points that uh, we will need later on. Because we're going to need to consistently beat them if this holds up. It's only one race. Um, but yeah, 18 seconds back. So we're going to get six points for that. Fastest lap and everything goes to Atsuno, which is fine because that means it doesn't go to Spartan. Nothing illegal for us. So, six points there. Holgerson's got to be pissed. I don't care. And yeah, you see, Lori's got supposedly like the same level of abilities. So why is he, you know, it's only only a four-star driver. So why is he, like, roughly the same level of abilities? So why was he so much faster with a weaker car? That's, uh, that's something I've got to figure out because it would seem I should be doing better than that. Okay, so we're in second place. Just ahead of Wolfhagen and Atsuno, we've got a seven-point gap up to Spartan. Not a great start, but it wasn't horrible either. Um, we've established our... I mean, we looked like one of the better teams here in Cape Town. We just didn't look like champions. And Lori uh, getting the win. Morale going down a hair with that finish for Gabler. Going down a lot for Bobby Stone. That's not good. Mechanic relationship dropping. That's not good either. If it drops below 50, I don't think he gets that bonus. Um, you see, he's got some improvement here that he's making. Uh, Lori, or Gabler, isn't going to improve anymore. So, yeah, we expected to win. We uh, placed second. Chairman Happiness is down. And team marketability down just a hair. So the standards are pretty high. But look, driver form 4.4, 4.1. Yeah, so part of this is I just need Gabler and Stone to pull their heads out of their ass and race better. Um, we lose 660k. So yeah, that's the first rating in the book, and already our job is uneasy. uneasy. Um, and mostly because of Cape Town. We'll get into that next time. Um, but we've definitely got our work cut out for us here. We've got to start getting somewhat better performances, especially out of Stone. Make him happy. Make Chairman happy. Make his dad happy. And... Improving our car to the point that it's going to help us get over the hump. So, 
probably a lot of learning to do on this. Uh, so next time we'll, we'll get set for Rio de Janeiro. Um, until then, thanks for watching. Be back soon.